Soapbox Engage is an online engagement tool set for nonprofit and other organizations to be able to do online engagements effectively and affordably. One of the apps that we have within our Soapbox Engage tool set is our events app. This app allows you to do event calendars, event registrations, ticketing for events, etc. This demo is going to do a little overview of the events app, how it works, and how it integrates with salesforce.com. Within the Soapbox Engage events app, you have a few different views for your front-end visitors. So for people that are visiting your event calendars, or your event pages, here's an example of what it would look like. For a number of our organizations, we're able to work with them to customize the design of the events app to match their existing website design. In this case, we're just using the standard template that we have that you'd be able to change out your uh, logo at the top of the screen here. And I'll go through a couple of the different views that we have within the events app. The first view is our calendar view. This is a view that allows you to see a month by month view of different events happening on your calendar. So we can see an event listed here with a title and a date and a hosted by and a location. And individuals are able to move forward and backwards between different months to see different items within your calendar view. Now for a calendar that looks like this, you know, it's pretty simple. You might want to have a different view that just shows a listing of your upcoming events. For that, we have more of a blog style format that can show you all of your upcoming events, allow people to subscribe to your events via an RSS feed, and then display your events um, in a ascending chronological order. So in this case, we have the November event with its date and time and some introductory information, photos, videos, etc., can be embedded as well. And then we have the next event, which would be the December event in this case, and some title, date, time, introductory information, etc. So two different ways of being able to show events that are coming in the future, both on the calendar view as well as the upcoming events list view. Now when you're looking at a particular event like the November 2014 seminar, you have a view that looks like this. We've got a title and we have two different ways to show the date and time that I'm just showing both together here. So we can show it under the title or we can have a when section here that makes it stand out a bit more. We've got the ability for you to go ahead and have a link included that allows somebody to click a link and to download this event to their own calendar, like a Google Calendar or an iCal for your Mac. On the right side, it comes embedded with a Google Map. It has the information about the location, the name of the location, maybe a phone number for it, address, website, etc., and also the ability to get directions via Google Maps from their location to the location of the event. A little further down below, we have a ticketing table here that allows you to have tickets of different types uh, with different start and end sales dates. So if you want to have an early bird rate, you can have that, for instance. You can set the number of tickets that will be available for each one of the ticket levels, and then also any sort of pricing you have on a per ticket basis. A little further down below, we've got the basics of the event details. And for this particular event, it seems to be the same content, text, images, etc., that we had on the uh, upcoming events view. You can also include a hosted by in case you want to be able to make it really easy for people to contact the person that's hosting this particular event. When somebody clicks the attend this event button, they get taken to the events registration page. This page as well, you can customize a number of the fields that are displayed and the way in which it's displayed. In this case, we're just asking for basic contact information of the person who's registering. So we've got the name, email address, their mailing address information, the organization they're representing, but you can show other fields or turn off fields as you see fit. And then down below, we have our ticketing table here. So I can actually hide this for a moment. And we can see the ticketing table just has the different tickets. You can choose a quantity where you as an administrator can set the minimum and maximum number of tickets available. Start and end sales, dates, quantity remaining, etc. As, <coughs> as I choose one of these, it now shows me the different quantity of tickets available. So in this case, I have an add edit information button that I can now add information about the attendees. This is ticket attendee information such as name, address, maybe dietary preference, t-shirt size, etc. You can turn this functionality on or off for different ways. It updates the total for the particular ticket level. And then down below, it has the total for this event, the ability to apply a promo code for discounts, etc. 
And then it also shows any billing information where you can accept payment via credit card, maybe even cash or check, as well as PayPal standard. It asks for credit card information, billing address information, and then a button to allow you to go ahead and finish the transaction. Once somebody clicks the button, it goes to your credit card processor, it confirms that their credit card can be processed, and if processed successfully, it redirects the user to a thank you page, it sends them an email saying thank you that you can customize, and then it saves all their data to Salesforce if you've integrated your Soapbox Engage solution with Salesforce. In Salesforce, it follows the rules of the Nonprofit Starter Pack or whatever flavor of Salesforce you're using for your organization, and that data gets in there right away at the time that somebody purchases the tickets. On the administrator side of things, once you log into Soapbox Engage, there's a number of apps that you'd have available to you. In this case, we're going to be focusing on the event pages here. And in this control panel, you can see some of the latest events we've created, the customized URLs we've created for each one of these events, and you have the ability to view and edit each event at a time, or to view all of the events that you have within the administrator. So in the event manager view, I can see all the different events that we have in the administrator, their names, venues, start and end times, if it's published live or not, how many tickets we've sold, etc. And I'm also able to go ahead and manage my venues, the reservations we've got, the hosts for different events, and any general configuration that we want to have as a default for the tool. If I look at a particular event we want to manage, like the November 2014 seminar, we've got a variety of different tabs here. The event tab allows us to do the basics of the title, is it published or not, start and end date, a venue and the hosts, any information about the tickets we're selling, and for each ticket I can go ahead and click on this and get a nice little view that shows me the name of the ticket, the price, the quantity available, the minimum and maximum number of tickets somebody can purchase, and the begin and the expiration date for sales. I'm also able to set a capacity for the entire event, regardless of the number of individual tickets sold per level. And I can also assign as many promo codes as I want to give us discounts, either a percent discount or a numeric discount for the sale of the ticket and have a number of tickets or a number of promo codes that are available at each level. A little further down below, we've got the description information where I can put the text and the image or video or whatever I'd like to include within the details of the event. And on the right side, I have metadata information for the use of search engines to collect description, keywords, etc. On an event-by-event -event basis, I'm also able to determine what fields show up for the person who's making the reservation. So do we want to allow reservations at all for this event? Do we want to be able to choose which fields appear? I can also go ahead and click on the custom headings and labels, which you'll see across the Soapbox Engage apps, that allow us to customize very specifically every piece of text within the front-end view of the app. So different section titles, what's the reservation button say, what's the attend button say. This is great for folks that want to be able to customize either for language basis, so maybe you've got Spanish-speaking audience that's registering for your events, as well as being able to customize it just for the needs of your audience. We also include attendee information where you can have just the basic information of an, uh, an attendee by attendee or ticket by ticket basis, what, would, what should appear. And we've also got the ability to add custom Salesforce fields so you can choose a Salesforce field for any sort of custom fields you want to collect, such as uh, t-shirt size, um, dietary preference, etc. Finally, we are able to have you customize the different communication messages you have. So do you want to have an email sent to the person that registered for the tickets, get their name uh, provide a name and email address where the email is coming from, be able to customize the subject line and have the body of the email with different merge fields you might want to display. Do you want them to redirect to a certain page or do you want them to go to just a thank you page where you can customize the page's title as well as the content of the page? And then you can even customize ticket pages such as the sales expired message, or what happens if sales for the event have expired, or what happens and what do people see when a event has reached capacity where you can be asking folks to be put on a wait list by including a link for them to fill a form to be added to a wait list. All of this can be connected to Salesforce, so when somebody registers for your 
event. The event attendee information goes into Salesforce as a new opportunity to represent the event registration. It's related to a campaign, which represents the event, and then tickets for each of the individual tickets for that particular event. And you can choose which campaign it would be related to by cl clicking this select button. This shows you all the campaigns that could be related to within your Salesforce instance. And if in the run of play, you haven't made the campaign in Salesforce yet to connect each of the events registrations to a Salesforce campaign, you can click the new button and you can create a new campaign in Salesforce on the fly here so that all of the attendee information goes directly into Salesforce related to this proper event. So that's what we've got for our Soapbox Engage events app. If you want to learn more, go to soapboxengage.com where you can see some of our success stories as well as more details about the app. And if you want a free trial or to see a demo, just click on the links here as well. Thanks for watching.